All right, guys, welcome to the Reseller Island podcast. My name is Jake. I go by J Ride Flips. This is Sunny Las Vegas. We're just going to go ahead and kind of hang out, kind of do a um, just kind of reseller question and answer. If you guys have any questions and you want to go ahead and put them in the chat, feel free to do so. Sunny and I, we're just going to kind of hang out, talk about some things, and then uh, answer some questions along the way. But yeah, if you guys have any questions about yard sales, thrift stores, eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, any questions that you have at all, go ahead and put them in the chat and, uh, and we'll horoscopes. Tell us everything. Did you, do you follow that stuff? Every, every now and then I do. The Zodiac sign and all that good stuff. Yeah. It I, know my that business. I know that I'm a Scorpio, but I don't know anything about signs or anything like that. Because you're a Scorpio, you don't care about signs. Is that is that is that like a common thing for Scorpios that they don't care about it? Um, not that I dated guy Scorpios, but I dated a female Scorpio, and it's like it, they didn't care about those type of things. So, <laughs> so you're into it. What what are you? <laughs> I'm a Libra. I'm all about balance and being fair. But the difference between for me, what I've learned what a, a Libra is for me to keep balance is that. My balance is what I consider fair for me. So that means I could give you more as long as I'm comfortable and that balances me inside. So it's really weird. It's it's, it's wishy-washy. But for the most times, it's always being selfless towards others. Are, are uh, Scorpio service oriented or are they just out to get what's theirs? I don't think so. I don't think so. Not that way. Not what yeah, I meant. I, I really <laughs> don't pay attention to that stuff. And I, I also think, like, probably going to offend some really hardcore people, but it's just of one of those things where it's like everyone can relate to all of them depending on their mood and stuff. And so, like, I don't know. I just think it's some fancy psychologist that understood the, the human condition and then just drew up all this stuff. <laughs> some type of marketing. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the live chat. We're happy to have all 19 of you here and growing. Hopefully, it goes up. 19. That's what I'm talking about. I predicted 25 to 30. Um, so we'll see. I said Sunny hundreds. Was, yeah, Sonny was pretty ambitious and said there would be hundreds here, but I don't, I don't think we're that big. Eventually. <laughs> like in oh, the replay. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't specific in my in my definition of who would show up to here. But I'm glad you all are here, folks. Um, this channel has been something. It wasn't intended for us to be like, hey, Jake, you want to do this? We were actually talking about a podcast when we were thrifting with Carrie American Arbitrage. Jay was talking about how he was wanting to do a podcast. And I just commented, replied saying, yeah, me too. I've been wanting to do that. And he gave me this squinch in his eye like, ah. And then soon after, he uh, he hit me up. He was like, how serious are you about this? And I said, dude, I am dead serious. But I'm trying to stay as live, alive as long as possible. And we started talking about it, and I'm glad we started it. We're getting a lot of good feedback of how good we work together, but in actuality, behind the curtains and screen, we hate each other. But for you all, we love each other. It's kind of like uh, kind of like Kobe and Shaq. You don't have to actually like each other to win championships and be successful. Or, you both just have Jordan and Rodman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so are you are you uh, Jordan and I'm Rodman, or am I Jordan and you're Rodman? I was going to say I was Rodman, but since you said Rodman first, you could take Rodman. <laughs> he's a dude, wild child. Rodman. I like him. Good old Dennis Rodman, man. What a guy. Yeah, dude, I was I was too young. I mean, during the 90s Bulls. I was I was born in 1995, so I was born right into the thick of their dynasty. But, dude, I heard mm. Dennis Rodman was – I mean, I'm a, I'm a super huge basketball fan, so I've basically lived it. Um, oh, my gosh, my, my Google. Hey, Google, stop. Dude, don't you hate it when Siri and Google try to answer questions for you when you're not even talking to them? Wait, don't. How about when you're watching people's content and they say um, Alexa say or Siri, and then know. yours goes off? And I was like, oh my gosh. And then you got like Google Nest around, you got your cell phone, you got your TV, you got Alexa, and it just starts all freaking out. It's weird. That's when I really start hearing your voices. Mm hmm. But yeah, this is this is cool. We got 21 people in here so far. Everyone's just we had 22 for like a split second. What's that? We had 22 people for like a, a split second. Oh no, no worries. It, it, it fluctuates pretty hard. Yeah. But yeah, people are just hanging out. It's good to see everybody in here. Um. 
too. We got some, we got some familiar faces and then hopefully we're going to start seeing some new faces. <laughs> Matt's profit pursuit. That's what I'm talking about. Good to see you here, man. Oh, right, we, we do have an early question. I don't know if you want to start off with questions yet, but we'll bounce back of like our shenaniganesses and then comments in here. So if you have questions, please feel free to ask. We'll do our best to answer them improperly. Yeah. This is my guy. This is my guy, Jonathan. He's one of my, uh, my, my great supporters on my channel. <laughs> Y'all triggered my Alexa. That's funny. <laughs> Uh, but John says, I don't know if I will be able to make it tonight, but I have a question. What do I need to do to get my draft bank to in order to start listing three a day? I have 40 listed, 136 sold, and 24 in the draft bank. Wow. That is an awesome. I preach 80% to 100% sell through rate, and you are, what, 380% sell through rate over 90 days? So congratulations there. Man, that's, that's huge. Good. That's pretty wild. Um, so in order to um, list three a day, what I do is I, I list things Monday through Friday and sometimes Saturday. Um, so you just got to pick how many you want to list per week, which you already have. Three times seven is 21. So you just need to draft at least 21 items per week. If you're doing that Monday through Friday, then that's five days. So 21 divided by five is four plus an extra one. So what you can do is just list five a day for five days. That's going to give you 25 drafts. Then you're able to launch three a day and then your draft bank will grow by four every single week. And then once you get to 50, then you can start doing four per day. If you ever get to a point where it's growing and you get to um, 100, then you can really start pumping out more listings. But all you got to do is pick how many days you want to list and then pick how many you'd like to list per day. And so if you ever wanted to get to five, five times seven is 35, 35 divided by five is seven. So you'd have to list seven per day, five per day, seven <laughs> listings. You have to draft seven listings per day. So that way you can launch uh, 35 per week. So many seven, flips is, in the seven is not bad. I look at, I don't look at how much items I'm going to sell per day. I look at how much of value I'm listing per day. Uh -huh. My goal is usually around 250, 300, more the better, because sometimes the items, they could be worth a lot more than one or two items. One item could be $400, which I do have a piece of glass up over here over me, um, $500. So that would be dumb for me to be like, I reach my mark and have one item when I have, many other items that I could list. So I, I don't try to limit myself with numbers. And the way j Wright does things is very well, very good. And I would say that he is one I'm picking his brain off of, of learning of how he does things, especially the sell-through rates is very important to focus on that. It's cool to see things that sell that sell for like, say, 40 bucks when you find it for a dollar or two, whatever that item is, but then find out that it's actually one out of like 50 items that had happened to sell for that much and everything else is like ten dollars fifteen dollars to see numbers i still get excited for as long as i've been reselling so i'm still trying to pick up after myself of the excitement and look at the item is it really in good condition is it worth it did i check the sold it's still a practice for me although i get excited the numbers will get you sometimes just put it in the cart yep just put it in the cart and look it up and see if it's got a fast sell through rate or if it's got before a, you uh, pay for it. Yeah. Before you pay for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're already, uh, we're already hurting oh, people's heads with, with math. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I love um, sometimes ADH Dave when he's doing a, doing a whatnot. He'll be like, okay, this is a lot of six and it's going for $30. That's $5 per item. And I'm like, Dave, please do more math. I love, I love the math. <laughs> well, oh, that goes. That goes to something that I think you might have told me. I don't know if you've said it on your content, but purposely saying things that are off to yep. make people comment, that's just part of what we do. It's fun. I don't think it's to lure anybody in the wrong way, but it's just little fun ways of like making people scratch your heads and comment back to you because part of content creating is getting feedback and helping people be inspired or intrigued to comment or join you or go against them um there's both sides of that yeah the easter egg in my latest video for my picking channel i just released it this easter morning egg. at nine o'clock um 
is I went through a ton of video games and then I'm like, oh, all of these video games actually just aren't worth picking up. So I'm going to leave them all behind. But I did show right on camera Castlevania for PlayStation 1. It goes okay. for 70 loose disc. It goes for like 95 if you have the case. And then it goes for 120 if it's if it has the manual and everything. And I bought that, but I didn't show myself buying it on camera. So now there's like seven comments being like, oh, you missed out on the Castlevania PS1. It's like a 70, 80, $100 game. And then I just comment back. I'm like, yep, I got it. No worries. <laughs> it happens. Sometimes you just turn off the camera and don't record it. Or think you're recording, you know, and sometimes the power just goes off, especially my GoPro has a tendency of just powering off even after a few minutes. I'm like, what's going on? I haven't even had you on for very long and you're fully charged. So some batteries are funny. Sometimes yeah. it sucks when you don't record like that juicy moment. Can I As the content creator. Screen? What's up, Taco Wolf? Welcome. And Archie and Johnny. Taco Wolf and Archie and Johnny. Johnny. Um, I can't click on things, but if you want to scroll down to almost the bottom, the source force. They have a question about bats and golf clubs. So there's a couple of different ways to package bats and golf clubs, but the easiest way is to just go to a used golf shop and in their dumpster, they will always have a bunch of usually like four by four by 48s boxes because they're shipping out drivers and clubs and stuff all the time and if you don't want to go dumpster diving that's fine too you can just go inside the first time i ever got one i just went inside and i said hey i need to ship a, a driver can i buy a box from you guys and then they always just go to the back and they give it to me they say don't worry about it um your used golf club shops might not be as friendly as mine you may have to pay for them or they may just kick you to the curb but honestly i don't think they would um, but yeah just go to used golf clubs golf shops and get those boxes that's the best way to ship them it's super fast what's up jenna how's it going i was um i remember now i i don't remember where the location is or the name of there's a place here i think more of henderson side that they buy golf clubs and items like that so i need to get mine and go over there and see who do it if they would just buy them out i heard they pay pretty good too kind of like played against sports kind of thing yeah, so I think that I think that's the name. Yeah, hmm. I'm gonna look into that. Yeah, like this weekend. No, yeah, I've, I've done deals like so. One time I actually did a deal like that in Vegas. I found an Easton Mako bat um, that was worth like seventy five dollars, and there was a, J, a played against sports right there on Craig Road, and I went to it, and the guy's like, "I'll give you fifty bucks right now." I'm like, oh yeah, sweet, let's do that. That's that's just under what i'd get after fees anyway so let's do it <laughs> this is exactly how you figure out a sell-through rate go watch j rides videos <laughs> calculated by watching his videos and buying what he buys then you don't have to do any math it's true yeah it's you true don't have to do math. <laughs> guys good what's up marine matt don't lie it doesn't especially when you don't know how to do it uh how can i speed up packaging i got that one um I don't do math either. Hurry Dude, up I love and buy. Dude, I, I like I like hold back on my channel about how much of a numbers guy I am. Dude, I did I just love numbers. And I know it's so boring. So I try to I try to keep it to a minimal. But here here's a look into my mind. My brother I don't play a lot of video games, but my brother and I, we grew up playing some. He loves video games. And what he does is he gets he he goes for characters and he goes for a sword that looks cool or he goes for like the the upgrades that make your character look cooler. It's more of like and a RPG. Play, game. Yeah, but when I play video games, I don't even see characters. I just see numbers. I'm like, okay, so this this character has like a speed rating of eight out of ten, and it has a strength rating of seven out of ten. That's the best balance. So I'm going to use that character as my base. And then I don't care if it looks ugly, but this helmet gives him like a 15% increase of speed. So now he's even faster. Yeah, you could have this cool sword, but it actually slows him down 45% and only increases his strength by like 25%. So it's a net loss. So I'm definitely not going to do that. That's how I play video games. And it's so annoying for my brother because I win every single time because I just, you know, but it's like... He's like, why don't you play to have fun? I'm like, dude, figuring that out and winning is the fun part for me. <laughs> I would say all of that math wouldn't matter too much when it comes to Mario Kart. Yeah. I, 
although you have everything you're talking about of of the ratio of what's better wheels body of the vehicle uh -huh. the only thing is like probably like like uh how traction it, it isn't each isn't each individual vehicle has a has a much like harder or softer brake so like when you're taking the turn does it have a more sensitive brake or is it just completely kid friendly it's not entirely kid friendly i would say the there's weight there's traction and then i think there's um not speed but it's something how it speeds up but i don't think i think looking at the things help people understand more of the body of what you're talking about not to lose uh -huh. everybody and everybody like come follow us we're, we're losing, we're losing. But, <laughs> but we're, talking about, we're talking about we're talking about i would i would whoop your butt in mario kart even if you follow that i would still be up there majority of the times getting first place dude i don't i don't we got 40 people because of mario kart let's keep saying mario kart <laughs> Uh, when is our next dinner date? Um, you know what? Um, Jenna, the next time. So what ended up happening, folks? So Taco Wolf up here, Taco Wolf Collectibles. Um, good friend of mine. We've been thrifting every now and then. He has a taco truck that he works in. He's also a reseller. He's in the pop culture, 90s retro toys, games, VHSs, things like that. Uh, very good. I also told him he should be going to Did Bits. I think he did. I hope Kevin accepted him to sell because he is one of the guys I would say that has an abundance of things to be on that particular site in that marketplace. Um, but in the taco truck, he said that they're going to have a place. I invited Jenna, uh, her husband, John, they have flipping name easy, their podcast or their channel. Then I think they just restarted a podcast. Um, Katie, Vicky invited them, Mikey bags of money, uh, his wife, super courts, Harry American Arbitrage and Dawn Lady Arbitrage. So we all wouldn't go out tacos, long story short, uh, with them. So that's why uh, Jenna's asking we're going to have it again. I would love to have another one and maybe work it out even if – I don't know if I'm pointing in the right way, but this guy ends up being able to make it on time um, to join us too when he comes to Vegas. Uh, just when J-Ride comes, he's in for like probably maybe six hours and then he's – audios yeah. back to – uh, St. George, because everybody misses them there. That's right. That's right. No, there's so many reselling YouTubers in Vegas. It's wild, man. There's a lot of you guys out there. There is a lot. Yeah, dude, there's hey. so many. Como esta nice. and the how you brought up. Um, we got Matt's Profit Pursuit. What's up, Matt's Profit Pursuit? This is one. Uh, must have been coming over from j Wright, but he created the first meme of us, I believe. Or was that Caleb's sales? No, I think it was Matt's. I think it was Matt's. I could be wrong. Um, but I recognize the name from when we first started our first podcast. Uh, people following each other, which is good. People connecting people together, which is part of why we're doing this podcast. Uh, to have another um, channel to teach people, learn from you all as well. Not just teach um, and have a good time. So I'm glad we started this. Dude, it looks like we got some some more numbers guys in the chat. To uh oh, talk about. Uh -oh. That's, and that and that and that's really my whole philosophy when it comes to reselling. Is like, for some reason, some people get really upset about like the sell through rate. For some reason, I don't know why, but because it's just it's just a math equation. It's just like, you know, if you have a store of six thousand items with a twenty percent sell through rate, I can tell you how many sales you're going to average every day throughout the year. If you have a store with 6,000 items with a 100% sell rate, I can tell you how much you're going to average every single day throughout the year. There's going to be peaks and valleys and things do change in value and things like that. So you got to stay on top of it. But that's like, I don't buy items. I buy sell rate and profit. So like, I don't like people ask me like, Hey, do you buy clothes anymore? And I'm like, if it has a good sell rate, I do. I don't buy baseball bats. I don't buy vacuums. I don't buy sunglasses and remotes. I just buy things that have a profitability and a fast enough sell through rate. So like I, I dog on CDs and cassettes all the time. Like I've, I've bought like 40 CDs to sell this week because they have, they have a fast enough sell through rate. Like I don't always pass on CDs and I don't all grab CDs. I don't even label them as CDs. I just label it as a, Oh, that's a 78% sell through rate item or that's 146% sell through rate item. Welcome to the math equation that is my whole life. I do it in everything. It's sometimes annoying. Aside from, how do I say this? Aside from 
what you just said, are there items that you know are low profit items with bad sell through rates, but know that you could sell it in a good amount of time that you end up picking it up? Low and low? No. So low sell through rate, extremely high profit. Yeah. Here's an example. This rust sound right here. This is a, uh, it's a, this, this you can connect to your multiple camera, security cameras. It's so like businesses use these. They have like 18 different cameras all across their business. And then that's kind of like, I'm not very good with the technical words, but that's kind of like the home base where you can see all of them on a screen. They all connect to this. So this particular model has one sold and seven listed, but Russet, whatever this is called as, in, as a whole, has like a 35% sell through rate, but that thing sells for $600 and it was only 15. So I broke my fast sell through rate rule because I'm going to profit over $400, $500 on it. It's probably going to take me, you know, a year, year and a half to sell. It might go quicker than that. It might even go longer than that. But yeah, if it was that slow of a sell through rate and I only made six bucks, definitely would have grabbed it. If somebody was to send you an offer right now, what would be your bottom dollar for that? Yeah. How long, how long have I had it listed? No, that doesn't even matter. Um, if someone offered me 300, I'd take it. Uh, so I not even like 150. Yeah. That's, that's getting listed tomorrow morning at 6 AM though. Mm -hmm. It's not listed yet. Living oh, good we're, with we're competing. Good. We're competing with tech and sports right now. Tech and sports just went live. Yeah. We're not in competition. Good old tech and sports. Yeah. I just now started following them. I, I, I've heard about them. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was like a sports type of channel because of the name. Uh -huh. So when I finally looked, I was like, oh, okay. I think I started hearing more about him. And what intrigued me was that he was walking around Disneyland and was saying this is where that. And I was like, that sounds fascinating. Like, let me go check it out. So I've been watching some of this content. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, but I believe this is to talk buddy. To Carrie loves to talk about that video. Mm. Every time, every time we're together, he's just like this. This fig leaf right here, twenty five dollars plus shipping. This over here is thirty seven dollars plus shipping. Look it up. <laughs> I think this comment is for you. Or, or it isn't on the screen. You don't see it on the screen. Hello from Washington State. Always appreciate your info and knowledge. It has helped me hit my first ten k in thirty three days. That is amazing. Hopefully, doubling that in two months. Yeah, that was for you, Sonny. That was that was your comment. No, that was your comment. <laughs> <laughs> I and the reason why I know that, folks, because I don't push sell through rates. I find what I like, and I know that I could sell it. And I do look up sell through rates. I just don't talk about it enough, I guess. And I know yeah. that when I don't, my my viewers was will ask me like, "Can you talk more about that?" So I'm more of like the content creator side, where if I find something. In a thrift store, I'll cut into here where I'm sitting at and say, hey, this is this is more information about it. And then I'll get right back into the thrift. So that's more of me. So following Jake and other people like him, um, I'm learning more about the numbers and wanting to share more because it helps me. Uh, what help what people put out helps me. And I just want to put it back out for it to keep rolling the snowball effect in a positive way. Let everybody learn. <laughs> Dude, highlight highlight the most recent comment. That's funny. <laughs> Brandon Elred. <laughs> low sell through rate and low value sounds like what my wife got when she married. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm sure that's not true, my guy. I'm sure it appreciates the time. It appreciates the time. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a appreciating asset. <laughs> yeah. Not like wine, but similar. Oh man. Good stuff. Good uh, stuff. That's funny. Because my dog, we finally know what my dog is. Uh, for those of you that follow my channel and know that I sent in her test like seven years ago, it seems like. Wow. She is, uh, she's 33% terrier, 26% collie. And then she's got a bunch of like five and six percents of like Labrador, some, some like yorishi or something like that but yeah so when people ask now i can finally say she's a terrier collie mix 
She's just a mix of everything, huh, dog? And she desires a ton of attention right now. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> oh, you got another channel you're working on? Oh, yeah. I, I tease all the time. That, and my five-year plan is is to eventually make like a, a J-Ride finance channel where I talk about all the awesome numbers that I love so much about HSA accounts and Roth IRAs and S corporations and tax advantage funds, all that good stuff. But that's probably, yeah, that's you, probably like two years from now. You have the background for it. So I don't see why you wouldn't. And you're very knowledgeable and understanding of what you've done, what's worked and what's continuing to work for the better. So I, I think you would have a good grasp on that because of your background of what you've actually got your hands on. And not just, hey, I read this and I understand it. Like some yeah. people do and share. And I'm like, I, I look at your stuff and I don't see that. For you, you've brought it up in your concept, which shows me proof of or tells me that it's proof. Well, that's, that's saying. also that's also why I'm waiting. I, I want to increase my uh, my real estate portfolio and have a solid, solid handle on that before I start talking to finance. It's okay. Caleb Sells. Thanks for being here, man. Andy so meta. Dude, man, this is are... awesome. This is this is exactly what this is exactly what we're wanting. Oh my gosh, Scout, <laughs> gotta leave me alone. I'm providing I'm providing a future for you, dude. Scout is so spoiled. She doesn't even know. Oh, it's a she. Yeah, she's she's a girl. But yeah, so uh, we got a uh, Miss Flippin Ain't Easy in the house. How's uh, how are things going with you guys? The uh, the new podcast with uh, bearded, bearded picker. What what's Scott's channel's name? There's just so many beards uh, that it's hard hard to keep up with. I think it's bearded picker. But yeah, there's there's just so many beard names that it's hard to keep up with. But it's awesome, awesome podcast. I'm enjoying it. But there's like bearded thrift machine. There's bearded thrifter on tiktok there's bearded there's a different bearded thrifter on youtube there's there's just so many beards i don't even consider this a beard just like little residue on the bottom of my chinny chin second chin ebay tells me what to buy i follow the numbers man that is that is me that's what i that's what i do too i just ask ebay does this sell and ebay will say yeah there's 47 listed and 92 sold. This definitely sells. You should pick it up. The Yard Sale Treasure Map app. Um, I uh, my, my town isn't big enough to use that. So I have it downloaded. And every time I look Yard Sales up, there's like maybe one. But then if I go on to Facebook Marketplace, there's always like, like 9 to 20, just depending on, just depending on the weekend. Is there a way to encourage people to give you good ratings without sounding like a beggar? What I do is I just have automatic feedback and that tends to, to be enough. Um, so you can go into your, man, this is hard to do off the top of my head, but if you just make sure you're logged in to your eBay account on one tab and then open another tab and Google set up automatic feedback on eBay and then those two tabs will be connected and it'll give you a link to set that up. So every time someone buys something, you will immediately leave a feedback that's like A++ buyer, fast payment, or something like that. And then when they get it and everything checks out, they're much more likely to leave positive feedback for you. I get one positive feedback for about every five sales. So about 20% of my items that go out, I get a positive feedback for. That's like, that's like the best way to uh, get more feedback. I don't even worry about feedback. How much feedback do you have? I don't even know. I'm I'm using my phone for my camera. I just got a I just got another negative feedback today. Good stuff. Uh, Maureen Joel said, "Wowzers! I watched your last podcast number two last night. So glad to see you guys live. Yeah, this I is am. Fun. I am glad to be alive, but to be." live having live podcasts with this guy it's really fun we got plans of things we want to do which um what time is it uh towards the end of the channel we're, we're gonna 
bring up something we want to do in the next live with you all to interact in. Um, we'll talk about more of that <laughs> later. I think it's going to be fun. I think it'll be a lot of fun for you all too. Oh, you just you just opened a content loop. What a what a content creator you are. So oh, make sure Caleb like <laughs> Caleb Sells says bearded Caleb Sells name change coming soon. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I uh, I couldn't handle a beard. Like, even what I have right now, I can just feel it on my face, and I'm probably going to go shave super quick, super soon because I just I hate I hate feeling my, my hair on me. Yo, we got a new PR. We got, uh, we got 50 people in the chats, folks. So if you could oh, all smash the thumbs up button, 50 thumbs up. There shouldn't be a reason why there's 50 people here and less than that thumbs up. So if you – 48 now, folks. Let's not go any lower. <laughs> Hit the thumbs up, folks. If you come in, just hit the thumbs up. Um, do, one thing I do you remember ask, your first live? How many how many people were in your first live? If you can remember all the way back then. I can. Three. So it took me three lives to actually get people come in. Oh, really? So your yeah, first live you zero? Yeah, for some reason three is my lucky number, but it doesn't sound like it. And it was the same way with my whatnot. It took me my third whatnot to actually finally get my first sell. So there were my first three YouTube and whatnot auctions were similar. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until 30 minutes in, right? And one thing I've learned from that is that when you start any record recording as a content creator, like when you're going live, don't wait for people to come in. You just start talking like people are there. You start having your intro of who you are, what's going on. And then as people trickle in, that's when you start talking to them specifically. So I didn't know that. I was just waiting and waiting and, oh, hey, here's somebody. So I learned a lot of my own through this. So, um, again, at the end of this live, we're going to share something with you in the next show as well. Um, that I want to give you a heads up. We could have did this today, but I wanted to give you a heads up on it. But there goes that content creator loop, J. Ray. Yep. Talk about. <laughs> yep. No, yeah. Um, I, I know you guys are all resellers and a lot of you don't do social media but it's just something that us youtubers like to, it's, it's one of the things we're obviously passionate about but uh there's a psychology called um loop closing so like a lot of times so like t so like tv does this a lot and then it's you if you if you do youtube and tick especially tiktok and short form stuff you want to open a loop that keeps someone on your content until that loop is closed so you could say like watch me make $300 in this thrift store and then they'll keep watching until you make $300 because they just have to, they have to see it. They can't just scroll without actually closing that loop. A lot of people do like it, it but you're just looking for as, as a high a percentage as you can. Cause like people a better one is like, if you put at the end of the video, if you put like, you got this guitar hero guitar, at the beginning of the video in text, you can put, I can't believe I only paid this much for that guitar. And then people will keep watching until they see how much you paid for the guitar because they have to close that loop. And if it's all the way at the end of the video, then you're going to get more people consuming your content. And some people drop off before you even get to the end of the loop because it's too far away, but it helps with engagement. The, back to the, I'm going to make $300 at this thrift store. Uh -huh. I think... It's a mix of people who want you to succeed and make $300 or more. Uh -huh. And then the people that are like, BS, he is not going to even do that. Watch, he's not going to show nothing. It's just clickbait. So it's like they're against you already, but it doesn't mm -hmm. matter because that's part of a positive clickbait. One thing I hate about clickbait as a content creator that I don't use is that I would not use clickbait and it not even be in the actual video. I'll wait for some videos and they have nothing to do with their clickbait. I just find that to be totally wrong. Should be like something being thrown at you at a potato or something for lying. Uh, but what's up, John? Flipping ain't easy. We got we got the husband and wife's in here, which is what I like. I love when there's families actually watching you, not just one person in the family. Dude, again, more more statistics and stuff. But I was actually reading this article that more and more families instead of gathering around the tv to watch abc to maybe watch like america's got talent or the bachelor or whatever that's not really a super family show but you get what i mean more and more families are gathering around the tv to watch youtube videos 
than they are cable TV programs. And it's it's actually climbing quicker on YouTube than it is on Netflix. So like people are people are like Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast is like the new like like ABC. That's like kind of like his goal is he wants people he wants everyone to like after dinner sit down and watch his 23 minute videos instead of going on and watching CBS The Office refund re, reruns for 23 minutes. And so it's in, it's interesting to see that graph go like, up and up and up too. So What's up, Sanchito? Jake, do you not bite your negative feedbacks? So a lot of no. people say you never ship out their packages. Yeah, no. So I get, I think I have 99% positive feedback. I think I have like 16 negative feedbacks this year out of, I don't know. 4,800 transactions or something like that uh, over the last three years. So that's 4,800 transactions, but how many items listed? Um, I currently have like 1640 listed. Because that, that number to me is actually not bad. For some people, it might be like, that's horrible. There's no perfect world. Some people just do it because some people hate purchases. Like they hate watch you and they'll do it and come at you. I've seen it happen. It's happened to me once. And I got it uh -huh. fixed, but I've seen it more to a couple of my other friends. But it's more because they promote that on their end of the feedback that they get that I think they're drawing those people in purposely. Yeah. Just, no, go check your favorite YouTuber's feedback that sells at least five items a day on eBay. Um, they they got some negative feedback. I just, uh, I don't know. It's like, so I, I deal in electronics. And so a lot of times people just claim that they don't work or sometimes they actually don't work and i have free returns and so i say hey yeah just go ahead and return it we'll get you squared away but they refuse to return it um and in my eyes a lot of that time it's because they want to keep the item and get a refund because a lot of electronics dealers will just refund without you sending it back and some people are kind of trained to do that so i say no yeah go ahead go ahead and, and uh send send it back we'll give you a full refund i'm really sorry about the inconvenience and then people just refuse to send it back and then give me a negative feedback and eBay says, because they didn't actually send the item back to me, I can't get the feedback removed or whatever. And so after like three times of that, uh, sorry, it's allergy season. After going through that process, like three or four times, I'm just like, gosh, I don't even care about negative feedback. Because uh, Disneyland has like a 3.6 stars out of five. And that's the happiest place on earth. No, I'm not, you know, like I'm just not negative. I'm not uh, worried about negative feedback. Yeah, I don't worry about it either. <clears throat> Folks, there's 90, there's 49 people in here, 18 thumbs up. John and Jenna, who have their show Flippin' Ain't Easy, they say when you leave a thumbs up on their channel that you get a sale. Um, we're going to make one up that if you hit the thumbs up here, what you get a negative feedback. So if you, no, if we're you supposed give us a to thumbs up, them. you'll get a negative feedback on eBay. So don't like the video. <laughs> we're supposed to encourage them to hit the thumbs up, not <laughs> <laughs> doing it all wrong. Oh shoot! Gosh, I'm not I'm not very good at this content. Uh, your credit score goes up by 0 0.01. <laughs> ABC Matt, what's up? Oh, dude, that's a wild one. That one, yeah. Jody, uh, oh, I, I I think I know your answer, but I'll let you do it. Jody, do you use the program to keep track of your listings and sales? Uh, the majority. My? Go for it. Does it start with my? My seller hub re my reseller genie now <laughs> okay. my reseller hub keeps track of everything except for cost of goods like you know it, it'll even tell you how much so like if you go to my seller hub payments reports it'll show you how much you've made in orders the money that you've refunded your expenses through fees and shipping labels and then all your net transfers so the only thing that it doesn't track for you is your cost of goods because eBay obviously doesn't have that information. So I just use that. Plus, I have my business credit card that just keeps track of all my cost of goods. So no no spreadsheets or anything necessary. But my reseller genie is something that a lot of people use that is, is uh, very beneficial because it keeps track of all that stuff. Brandon, has anybody ever accepted an offer on eBay didn't realize you accidentally bought something instead of selling uh, something? Embarrassed to say I did that. Uh, I'm not embarrassed to say I did that. I was close to hitting it. And the reason why this happens, folks, is say on eBay, you'll look up mm -hmm. items that you have and you sell similar. 
So you think it's yours because the name is very uh, fresh in your head and the image, right? So you just see and you're like, you get an offer and you're like, hell yes. And you hit it. Uh, you'd accept. Uh, I almost did accept, but then I ended up um, like looking at it. And I was like, wait, that's not my background photo and caught myself. So um, don't be embarrassed. It happens. It happens. All you got to do is go to your computer. I think it's better on your computer to cancel the order before you actually purchase it or message them, ask to cancel it. Yeah. Dude, uh, <laughs> Soda City flips through in his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, my reseller genie code. <laughs> Just capitalizing on the free advertising. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. I like the hustle. A second. <laughs> he's, a, he's a little farther down. Uh, it's all right. I'm just joking. He can leave it. How do you get rid of negs? I used to call in, but the reps won't do anything anymore. On eBay, it's, it's, oh uh, man, it's really hard to get a hold of them now. Yeah. It's really hard. I was gonna make a I was gonna make a video on this, but the easiest way to do it is just click into your feedback on your desktop. So like here, I'll just do it right now live. So I have this negative feedback. You go to it and you just hit request revision, and you make sure your password is put in so that way it recognizes that it's you. And then you just use some legal jargon saying that you did everything you could to create a positive experience. Um, and then you put it on, on something else that was out of your control, which is the reason for the negative. And then if eBay feels like you were correct in that statement, then they'll just take it off for you. Um, I don't really care about negative feedback anymore, so I don't really do it. But, uh, but yeah. Oh, wow. I, I, I got another one right here request so request revision i resolved the buyer's problem with transit i sent out the parcel and did everything i could to provide a positive customer experience unfortunately my post office never sent out the parcel and I refunded the buyer promptly. And I'd say there's about an 85% chance that they'll just uh, take that away. Send. Miss misspelled everything. The word. Well, everything. thank goodies. My wife and I have 3000 listings and we compete on who can sell the most in a week like real companies, that's that's a really good, healthy environment, I would say, to be having uh, your loved one be also your peer who you're in competition with, a healthy, healthy competition. I think, um, I'm not going to say who, but I know, Jay, we were talking about this last time we spoke, uh, being in competition with other people in a community of just, just trying to do better, not that you're hating on them or wanting anything bad for them, but knowing that you're striving to be better. Um, I think that's always fun, especially in return, you're having a good time. And also making money at the same time. That's making that money. Making that, making it go cha ching. Beard, cha -ching. Bearded poke tuber. Another beard tuber. Another one. But yeah, yeah, that's how I uh, take care of negative feedback. It's actually, it's actually pretty simple. Just as long as you can prove that you did everything you could to provide a custom, a quality customer experience, uh, eBay usually takes it down. But honestly, it's just, it's just not really a super huge deal. Like, uh, like pe people are just gonna have like negative experiences no matter what. I I've never, you know, like. Find me a company on Google that has a true five star that doesn't pay for the bots to get removed. <laughs> you know? The win is five star, but they pay for that five star through four. The win? What's the win? that? Five star hotel and casino resort. Oh, yeah. No, but yeah, but I, it, I, I, it's I, exactly I, what you I, said. I, they, they pay for it. They pay for yeah, a four. I've, I've run go. multiple different business. I had a pest control company and stuff, and it got to a point where we were doing several dozen services every single day. And uh, I, I was I was I was offered um, by by a company to have the uh, the negative feedback removal, but again, I just didn't care. <laughs> you know, it's it's all whatever. 
I'm just uh while I'm here might as well might as well send some messages. Oh. Just got a message about an item that's $129. Let's see if we can close the sale. Do it. Approve. Look, folks, here's the thing. If you hit the thumbs up button, we get more sales that we could share with you. How about that? I think that's a good uh a good incentive for us. If you hit the thumbs up button, we get more sales. We'll figure that one out with the thumbs up button to make our own. <laughs> the Latina seller, how do you focus on do listen consistently? I will say for me recently, I started another YouTube channel of a daily vlog and it's really helped me. I've only got like four videos in, but it's really helped me look at what I'm documenting about myself of what I'm actually doing and not doing. So it's been in doing really good of just mirroring myself and seeing myself for what I'm actually doing and not thinking I did all this and that. And come to find out I'm not doing much at all, but I have lately. I have lately. But that's entirely different of what people probably want to do walking around recording themselves and look on their phone at their videos. <laughs> well, I just I just I just try to focus on listening more than anything. Yeah, I made a video about this once. I get, I just have like a really strong why. Um I don't know. I also just like to see numbers and things improve and, and uh get better over time. But I just have a, a ton of really really high arching financial goals that I just want to absolutely obliterate. So I don't know. I, I want to, I just want to be to every single soccer game and basketball game and volleyball game that my kids have. And uh, if I'm a millionaire, I'll have the opportunities to go to every single one. So every time I, every time I have an inclination to not to list, I just think of seven year old Billy who will be crying because I couldn't make it to his T-ball game. So gotta be there. You better not do that, Billy. You better be there for him. I'll be there. That's why I list better, every single better. day. You, you but yeah, better. It's good stuff. What's the craziest thing you have sold for a crazy amount of money? I sold some Hanes thigh high pantyhose for two hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. That is yeah. awesome. I've sold a few vintage undies myself. Um, the craziest one, not high value, but the craziest one sticking to undies, I ended up finding it was uh, the family guy, uh, Peter Griffin, who was turned into one of the, I think, slash um, characters or uh, music person. Um, and it had some markings in it. I did wash it. It wouldn't come out and it still sold for $35. Nice. That's dope. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always I'm always shocked by like that rough sound that I just showed you guys like 20 minutes ago. And I'm always just amazed by different Onkyo and different receivers and amplifiers and things like that. I sell things like that for 500 bucks very regularly. I'm always amazed by that. But my biggest sell ever, a lot of people ask me this, my biggest sell on, on eBay, um, I got some Chanel sunglasses, frames only. The lenses were super scratched, but... They were some nice Chanel eyeglass eyeglass frames. Bought them for five dollars at the yard sale and sold them for eighteen hundred dollars on eBay. So that was pretty dope. That is super dope. Yep. Jody, I also sold and, a I also sold a Dudley Lightning Strike softball bat for sixteen hundred dollars on eBay that I got for four dollars at a thrift store. Sweet. I'm gonna start picking your card every time you come in thrift over here. Uh, Jody, I need a new scale and your recommendations. I would say consider the type of items you get as in their weight and also get a scale that could be used to get away from an area move out. Mine has a cord on it and the the screen is away from it. So I could see it before I had got a scale and the screen was right underneath, but the items that are getting were a little bigger. So that taught me that I needed a scale that would weigh up to things like 40 pounds and over. Although my things are a lot less, but I get some large items, but I couldn't see it because I couldn't lock the screen to see the screen. So think about all those little things. I got my nose in AccuTech at the time. That was back in like 2018. And I think I got it for 20 bucks at the time. I think the prices went up on them. Yeah, it's like that. Mine's just great. Yeah, this is what I've used my whole two years and two months of reselling. Yeah, my max is 110 pounds. Yeah, same as mine. Yeah, it's good stuff. I just, 
I, yeah, we don't. I don't really have like a recommendation. I mean, that one's that one's nice. It's lasted me for over two years, and it was super cheap. So, but yeah, yeah if you want to invest a little more money into it, you can. But honestly, like stuff like that just works really well. I've also sold a few, like really huge industrial meat scales, like that you see in butcher shops. Um, I sold a few of those for like six, seven hundred dollars each on eBay, and. Uh, yeah, those those were really awesome finds. I found I found three of those for twenty five dollars, and I sold like two of them for three hundred and eighty, and then one of them was worth even more, and it went for like six eighty or seven hundred or something like that. Those are always good. Yeah. Industrial kitchen items do are usually very valuable. Yep, um, but I also have losses all the time, you know. So especially dealing in electronics, like I've had a. Uh, Especially when I was early into reselling, I shipped out a uh, KitchenAid mixer and it was like a 6.5 quart. It was like one of the, the big boys. It sold for like $370 plus like 90 in shipping. And I shipped it out and it arrived broken. And that, that, dude, that almost ended my eBay career. I'm like, holy cow, dude, a $500 return. This is nuts. But I just uh, refunded them. They threw it in the dumpster behind their house or their business or whoever bought it. And I just kept rolling and I just kept buying, buying cheap stuff and selling it for more money on eBay. And here we are. It's like, I'm not selling. That's a little scary when you, that happens to you because then you worry about, do I really want to get into more higher value items? Let me stay safe with the t-shirt and pants because that won't break, you know, and it's mm -hmm. a lot less than a $500 dip in your account. Yeah. But I've learned from that and I've sent out like 14 or 15 KitchenAid mixers since they're really, they're really good money. So. Wolfman got a trophy that says best eBay sales of the week. Put it in our office. Uh, Wolfman, where did you get that trophy from? Was it direct from eBay? Because that would be awesome. But regardless, that's an awesome trophy and memento for it to just be like, yeah, I got this. I don't think anybody else does. But that is something I've been thinking about doing. And maybe now that we have this podcast of having a trophy at the end of the year of people that stood out to us that we give to them. Employee for, of the yeah. year. Employee of the month. Yeah, so like we will give something to somebody. I think that would be ADH cool. Dave and uh, American Arbitrage just went live on whatnot, and Harry Tornado just went live on whatnot. He was already live earlier, so he must have went live again. I was in there. Yeah, this, the the title is more one dollar clearouts, and then Jonathan uh, found ADHD and American Arbitrage's amazing finds with two dollar starts. Keep it at two dollars. Those guys are hilarious when you're able to hang around them. Oh, that's cool. Finding two iPads. I have two that I I probably need to sell that I don't even use myself. Uh, Art by Act. Uh, Sonny, can you talk some beginner tips on glass? Yeah. Um, I would say get a UV uh, black light, just a regular one. Um, you could also get a three six five NM UV light. I think that's on Amazon called Dark Dawn. Uh, that might be around twelve dollars. You get one that's rechargeable. But usually the little plain ones is when you want to find to find some uranium Vaseline glass. If you find any glass pieces, it's good to look up if they have signatures on it or stickers. Definitely helps, as most people would want to look for anyways, regardless of it's glass or not. Um, and then Google Lens. All those fails do that. But then Facebook has a, a crazy amount or a handful amount of really good, legitimate glass uh, companies that like Murano or Viking, you could follow them on Instagram and they are strictly all that. And you could ask them questions and send photos and they could tell you if it is or isn't or more than likely because not everybody knows everything. But uh, it, those are would be the basic things I would say to start out with. That still goes a long way for me that I practice using those little things. I've sold, I've sold a little bit of glass in my time too. <laughs> I, hope, I hope to see more. I, I, I mean, I sell, I sell a little bit of Pyrex um one of one of probably my biggest category this month is just like kitchen appliances and stuff you know parting out food processors and stuff and i i sell a little bit of uh just the just the old like super common super basic see-through clear glass pyrex um handle lids gosh english is hard sometimes because just, the lids, just, the, just the lids sell just for like, like $16.99 plus shipping all the time. So like, Ladies I mean, and gents, we have Kevin dollars. in the house, Commonwealth Picker. Kevin, the Commonwealth Picker. 
Kevin's gangster name, Mafia gangster name would be Kevin Three Sheds. <laughs> I Kevin love saying Shed, that all Kevin the time. Three Sheds and, and a toy hauler. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin Three Sheds and a toy hauler that we learned in uh, Soda City Flips video is not metal. It is some sort of fiberglass. Good stuff. Good stuff. No, yeah, John, we are we we knew that uh Tekken Sports was going live. We're we're still early on in the podcast. We I was expecting anywhere between twenty-five to sixty here. So we're we're right on track with our growth. We're happy with we're happy with fifty live. I wonder how many people are in text. Probably like I'm gonna guess one hundred and sixty-three. No ideas. Tekken Sports. <laughs> Oh no, Jody bought one on eBay. Lasted two weeks. Holy oh, cow! Yeah, five hundred and seventy live. That's wild. It's way more than one hundred and sixty-two. The most I've ever had in a live was like over thirteen hundred. Oh shoot, dude, that's nuts. It was it was all on drama. People just yeah, no, yeah, you're was. you're telling about that. That's funny. Um, the most I've ever had in a live, I think, was I can't remember if it was four twenty-seven or four seventy-seven, but. Somewhere between 400 and 500. That was pretty That was pretty dope. Jake, is this true? What's that? Jose Rivera saying you only use Pirate Ship for shipping? Yeah. Yeah, I use what? Pirate Ship for shipping because what? it's the easiest way to hook up a, uh, a uh, Chase Rewards card. Uh, so me and my wife go to, like, Thailand and Hawaii and Greece and stuff, like, once or twice a year because I'm already shipping hundreds of dollars worth of labels every day so why not use a credit card that gives me travel points um so then i'm able to do stuff like that it's pretty sweet but i'm actually uh talking with pirate ship right now to do some dedicated videos so so uh things are coming hopefully uh hopefully things are coming on that front soon that'd be really cool sweet sweet i like pirate ship i've been using yeah. them a little after they came out uh i never paid for any of their services I don't even know if they still do now, but before they had options of paying for something, but whatever I'm using for free, I'm using. And you could integrate it with eBay anyway, so it's kind of the same, but better yeah, at times. Sweet. I'm hoping that you can I'm hoping that we can integrate Mercari into it soon too. Dude, I, I've really been enjoying Mercari. A lot of people have really positive and really negative things to say about Mercari, but I don't know. I have like a 0.5% sell through rate on Mercari every day. I, I'm uh, I have just under 800 listed. I'm averaging like four and a half cells a day on Mercari, so that's nice. Been really enjoying that. Jody's a full-time self-employed barber. Nice. I might need a haircut very soon, especially July. Vegas gets crazy hot over here. I could only imagine Arizona. I'm slowly dipping my toes into reselling. And 45 day 45 days in, 600 dollars with 90 listings. Decent. I, I would say that's more than decent. That's amazing. I applaud you. Um, Jonathan, he's he's talking the good old Dave Ramsey. So the thing is with my credit card is I've never been in, in debt to it uh, because I'm only using it for business purposes and my business is cash flow positive. It makes way more money than it, than it spends each month. So yeah, I, I pay off my credit card every single Tuesday when I get paid from from eBay. So like I've never I've never I've never paid any interest on any any of the money on it. All it does is it lets me it lets my wife travel the world. I'm not like super into traveling. Like it's cool or whatever, but but yeah, like I, I don't hold any debt whatsoever. Like I just have a zero balance every Tuesday because uh, because of the cash flow positiveness. Is that a word of the business? So it's it's not like I don't I don't I don't recommend like people who who have struggled with credit card debt to get a business credit card, because then you're, then you're really like playing with the devil or whatever, but credit cards, credit cards. Oh, dude, it, th I'm going to talk about this a lot in, in a year and a half or two years on my J ride finance channel, because dude, credit cards can so be wait two years, blessing. folks. <laughs> credit cards can be a huge, huge blessing. So like I have, I have a credit card that has like a $269,000 balance on it, not balance um, credit on it. I, I call it my, my house flipper. Because so, like I can literally just buy a, a double wide trailer with my credit card, and then just you know pay it off before before it starts uh, before it starts accruing interest, and uh, like it's, it's really sweet. So you know I'm gonna get more and more into uh, like uh, real estate and house flipping and things like that as well as my as my as my business and my my career matures. 
But yeah, you can definitely get in over your head with credit cards, but credit cards can definitely, definitely be a huge, huge positive and um, blessing in your life. Also, you can use cash back. It's not as advantageous. Cash back is usually like one point for one cent. But when you leverage it with different sites and different chase partners, you can actually get like eight and a half cents per point when you maximize it for travel. So I know this is really boring talk for a lot of people, but I'm pretty passionate about it. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did pay off my credit card uh, several years back. And uh -huh. that was probably the worst thing I could have did because I didn't use it. And then the credit card company, I forget what I was using. Um, they kicked me off. So it's not like I was able to use it again. And then my credit score went down a few points because I didn't have that amount there in my credit history as before, which I still have. Like I have a pretty good credit score. It's like seven something. Mm -hmm. But I would say don't, if you want your credit score to keep going up or remain those things, you could just use it. Don't, don't just pay it off. Like I did and not use it. But yeah. Yeah. You can, you can leverage credit cards for, for some really good stuff, but the average, the average person falls into the credit card trap and then, Dude, like 24% APR is awful, 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 awful. Like never, never get into credit card debt. And if you're in credit card debt, get out of it as fast as you can. Because a lot of people like have credit card debt and they'll invest into the stock market. And it's like, you'll be lucky to like have an 8% increase every year in the stock market. Meanwhile, you're paying 26% interest to a credit card company every single year. Like, dude, that is... It's not not a good thing, <laughs> but yeah, we don't we don't have to keep talking credit cards and finance. No, I find it fascinating. Actually, I, I could dig into it on how I've been successful in this, the few stocks that I have bought and made um, hundreds of dollars in very little time and got out unintentionally at the right times. But we could talk about that some other time. Um, but we're at an hour. But there is something we do want to share with you is that in our next live, we you, you want you say it, you say it. No, you say it. I don't know. No, you say it. No, okay, no, I say it. No, you have right, it first. You say it. All right, I'll say it. All right, so we want to invite you all, the, the public chat, to come into the live next time, and you're only going to have two minutes. So this is a heads up right now to think about if you want to jump in, you're going to have two minutes to talk about yourself and promote yourself um, within those two minutes. And then it doesn't matter if you're done or not because we, I'm going to kick you off, and then it'll be the next person. I think that would be really fun. Let people know about you as well. And also we get to learn about who's watching us and things about you. So it's the more we know about each other and understand, the more we get to also pick each other's brains and grow in so many different ways. Yeah. So next, uh, next time we go live and these are, um, these are, we'll schedule them like a day before, but the, the podcast drops every morning, every Monday morning at eight, at seven, 7 a.m. No, 9 a.m. Eastern. Exactly. Um, and then the lives, we'll probably do a live like maybe twice a month, sometimes three, sometimes once. But next live, we're just going to have a StreamYard link in the chat that you guys can click on. We can have you guys hop on to the live with us. You don't have to have the StreamYard app, anything like that. All you have to do is have a smartphone with a camera and we're able to send you that link. You guys can hop on for two minutes. You can promote your YouTube channel. You can promote your eBay store. You can just talk about your eBay selling business and journey. Um, or you can just introduce yourself to the community because again, the reseller Island podcast was made with the intent of making reselling less lonely. And we want you guys to become more familiar with each other and have fun, a lot of fun, but make more money than a lot of fun or balance it out if possible. That's fun. That, dude, that's fun for me. <laughs> so next week, folks, you get two minutes. I hope all of y'all participate in this. Tell your friends about us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the content and videos, although it's only a few videos out or a couple of videos out. Uh, we have a lot of plans for this and want to do a lot of things. And we will not be as, success, as successful as we possibly can without your support. So we're giving it back with the content that we're sharing and info and having a good time, especially during the lives. That's what I'm talking about. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Uh We'll, we'll be recording the podcast tomorrow and then it'll launch on Monday. So we'll see you guys uh, Monday morning. My Bye. My dog says goodbye as well. <laughs>